Hello, this is my predictions video for the Biology Paper 6 alternative to practical papers, so that's for CIE, IGCSE. Now, they're clearly going to ask you about variables during this paper, so do make sure you know the difference between independent, dependent and control variables. So remember, the independent variable is what you change, the dependent variable is what you measure, and the control variables are what you keep the same. You'll most likely be asked to design an investigation during this paper, so do use the variable layout there. So for example, if we were investigating the effect of light intensity on the rate of photosynthesis, our independent variable would be, I will change the light intensity, and do point out how you would do that. There are marks for including a sensible method, I will hold a lamp 10 centimetres away, 20 centimetres away, 30 centimetres away from the plant and I will use a ruler to do this. You need to include appropriate apparatus where at all possible. The dependent variable now, so what will you measure? Avoid using the word amount. In this case, I will count the number of oxygen bubbles released and because we're looking at a rate, rate always infers a time period. So I will count the number of oxygen bubbles released in 60 seconds is a really nice way of looking at the rate of photosynthesis. Remember, oxygen is produced as a product of photosynthesis. An improvement here could be to use a gas syringe to capture the oxygen because you will get a more accurate representation of the volume. Control variables, what you keep the same. Make sure these are sensible. So in this photosynthesis experiment, carbon dioxide concentration, species of pondweed, length of pondweed, these will all influence how quickly photosynthesis takes place, as well as things like temperature, which is an example of an abiotic factor. To improve reliability, you'll need to state, repeat and calculate an average. But like I said, try and get your answers nice and organized, make sure you include appropriate apparatus, and you may need to draw a results table. Broadly speaking, what you change, your independent variable goes on the left-hand side of your results table. What you measure, your dependent variable goes on the right. Do make sure you include sensible units, and these units should be included at the top of the table, not in the body. They will deduct marks there. You'll also expect to be asked to draw a scale drawing. Make sure it's just an outline, and do include, if it's something like a tomato, do make sure you've included the seeds, and you need to occupy a large portion of the box that they provide. You'll most likely be asked to draw a graph, so make sure you've got your axes labelled correctly. Your independent variable, what you change, goes on the x-axis. Your dependent variable, what you measure, goes on the y-axis. Include units, occupy as much of the graph paper as possible, and make sure to include a line of best fit. These marks come up pretty much every single year, so it's important that you draw your graphs really accurately. The specification very clearly lists the type of experiments they could ask you about, so that could be food tests, how to test for glucose or reducing sugar. With CIE, you'll need to point out it's reducing sugar, how to test for proteins using bioarray reagent, how to test for fats and starch. So make sure you've learnt all the relevant colour changes. It's worth recapping your potometer because remember that's what you're going to use to measure the rate of transpiration. So make sure you look at all the abiotic factors which will affect transpiration as well as specific potometer setup to do with drying leaves, cutting the shoot at an angle under water, sealing joints with petroleum jelly to stop air getting in. Coupled with the large scale drawing, they like to ask you to do magnification calculations. Remember, to find magnification, you need to do image size over actual size. Do make sure you have your ruler with you. And the one thing to notice here is that your units need to align. So it doesn't matter which unit, but if there's a mixture of micrometers and millimeters, you do need to make sure they're both in the same unit. So to get from millimeters to micrometers, you multiply by a thousand. And the opposite is true. To go from micrometers to millimeters, you divide by a thousand. Make sure you're aware how to take accurate readings, so whether that's reading at eye level to make sure that you avoid parallax errors. If it's a liquid in a test tube or a measuring cylinder, make sure you're looking at the bottom of the meniscus. Make sure you've done plenty of past paper practice because they like you to read you know, the temperature reading on a thermometer, the volume reading on a measuring cylinder. Do make sure you can do that. And again, record to the appropriate number of significant figures and decimal places. They will tell you in the question how many they're expecting. Remember, if you need extra help here, we are running a ATP CIE Paper 6 Biology Workshop 
this weekend on Sunday. So do check out the website if you'd like to join us as we take you through the best ways to approach this paper. But anyway, good luck. Let me know how it goes. Comment below and I'm looking forward to seeing how the paper goes.